in our previous lesson we learned about two of the major climate types of asia where we covered the mountain and the desert type of climate their respective vegetation and wildlife and in our previous lessons on the major climatic conditions of asia we covered the rest of the climate types too in this lesson we will be concluding our discussion on the major climates of asia by looking into the final two or the last two types of climate that exist in the south and eastern part of the continent we are talking about the tropical monsoon climate that we usually find in the southern and southeastern part of the continent and finally the equatorial type of climate that we see around the equator in the extreme southeastern part of the continent so let's look at each of them as we proceed the mountain ranges in the central and eastern part of the continent acts as a barrier against the moisture laden winds from the indian and pacific ocean bringing rainfall in the southern parts of the continent and keeping the rest dry so we just saw how the mountain ranges act as a barrier against the moisture laden winds bringing rainfall in the southern parts of the continent this gives rise to another major climate type and that is the tropical monsoon climate the tropical monsoon climate exists mostly in the southern part of the continent and we'll be learning about it as we proceed but before we get into the discussion of the tropical monsoon type of climate we need to understand that asia's rainfall pattern is influenced by a number of factors so the first factor that influences the rainfall pattern of asia is the cyclonic winds so asia's rainfall pattern is majorly influenced by the cyclonic winds now these cyclonic winds are winds that are irregular and they are of short duration now where do these cyclonic winds emerge from or originate so they are a result of certain pressure system that exist over the continent of asia right so the cyclonic winds are a result of a pressure system known as the cyclones and anti cyclones so cyclones and anti cyclones are pressure systems that helps in the development of cyclonic winds and these cyclonic winds which are irregular and of short duration influence asia's rainfall pattern now how all of this goes about is what we need to look at so we need to first understand what exactly is a cyclone and anti cyclone as a pressure system so cyclone is an area of low pressure where the air masses meet and rise so it is an area of low pressure where the air comes together and then they rise so in a cyclone or an area of low pressure where the winds meet and rise there we have a bad weather so we can often say that a cyclone usually indicates a bad weather and sometimes they can also cause big damage to places over which they pass so a cyclone usually brings along bad weather like clouds or heavy rainfall that might sometime cause huge damage to places from where they pass so let's see how a cyclone works so cyclone is where the winds come together that is they meet in a low pressure area at the surface of the earth and they move in a spiral way right they come and they meet and they rise up to form clouds which then brings heavy rainfall over the places where they pass from now they have a different movement in the northern and southern hemisphere in the northern hemisphere they move in an anti clockwise direction and in the southern hemisphere in a clockwise direction so that was about the cyclone now let us look at another pressure system that is the anti cyclone so anti cyclone is right opposite to a cyclone in an anti cyclone we have an area of high pressure where the air moves apart and sinks so 
there from the high pressure area the winds or the air they move apart and they sink and they move towards the low pressure area that surrounds the high pressure area so in an anticyclone we have a high pressure area right where the air moves apart from the center of high pressure area and they sink now unlike the cyclone an anticyclone indicates a fair weather so while a cyclone brings along heavy rainfall and can cause damage an anticyclone is what indicates a fair weather but before we proceed with our lesson could you help me answer this simple question an anticyclone is an area of high pressure where the air meets and rises moves apart and sinks meets and sinks or moves apart and rises which will be the correct answer well the correct answer is the air in an anticyclone moves apart and sinks so they move apart from the center of a high pressure area and they sink to go on to places that are low pressure area right so in an anticyclone the air moves apart from the center that is the high pressure area and then it sinks so opposite happens in a cyclone situation now in an anticyclone in the northern hemisphere the air moves apart from the high pressure area in a clockwise direction and in the southern hemisphere is move apart in the anti clockwise direction so that is where we saw how anticyclones and cyclones both having its own characteristics influence the rainfall pattern of asia so places that are of high pressure are places of anticyclone or experience of fair weather that is they do not experience heavy rainfall however places that are of low pressure are area where the air meets and they rise creating clouds and thus leading to heavy rainfall so those are cyclone areas let's move on to look at another factor that has a huge influence on the rainfall pattern of asia so the rainfall in the southern and eastern part of asia is controlled by monsoon winds right so they are highly influenced by the monsoon winds and these monsoon winds reverse their direction with seasons now what exactly are these monsoon winds and how do they work so these monsoon winds are a result of or are developed from of high pressure and low pressure areas due to unequal heating and cooling of land and water right so unequal heating and cooling of land and water leads to the creation of low pressure area and high pressure area and that gives rise to monsoon winds we will look at each of these factors that leads to the development of monsoon winds and then understand how these monsoon winds influence the rainfall pattern of asia so during daytime we know that lands get heated up faster so there's high temperature during daytime there the air becomes light and it rises creating a low pressure area however during night time a opposite happens so during night time when the temperatures are low there a high pressure area is created because the air becomes heavier and dense and they come together and sink so what happens that during daytime where the temperature is high the air rises creating low pressure area and during night time where temperature is low a high pressure area is created so by that logic the land gets heated up faster during the day as compared to the sea so a high pressure exists over the sea so when air moves from a high pressure area that is the sea to the land it carries moisture and brings rainfall on the land So we just understood how monsoon winds are formed or developed. Now in Asia during April to September that is during the summer season winds blow from Indian Ocean and Pacific Ocean and due to unequal heating of land and water a low pressure area is created over much of the Asian continent and a high pressure area is over the sea. These winds bring along moisture and bring rainfall in the 
parts where low pressure region has been created these are southwest and southeast monsoon winds now during winter season a similar thing happens but in a opposite way so a low pressure area is created over the seas and a high pressure area prevails over the land because during winter season the lands get cooler faster than the sea therefore the winds blow from the land to the sea and they bring rainfall in certain parts of asia mostly towards the south and southeastern parts these are northwest and northeast monsoon winds so we just took a look at how monsoon winds influence the rainfall pattern of the asian continent right however ocean currents interestingly also play a very important role in influencing the rainfall pattern of asia so a very good example of the same is here so kuroshio current is a warm current while oashio current is a cold current now these warm and cold ocean currents have their respective influence over the areas they cross so while kuroshio current has a warming effect over the eastern coast of japan the oashio current has a cooling effect on the same so the oashio current that blows from the arctic region towards or along the northeastern coast of japan keeps the place cool and gives it severe winters however the kuroshio current that blows from the temperate zone along the southeastern coast of japan gives it warm summers and keeps the water here from freezing thus it helps in carrying on with navigation and trade and commerce so they both have their respective influence on the climate of japan and a similar thing happens to all the places or countries that are present in the coastal regions of any continent and they are also influenced by such ocean currents so there we got a complete insight of how asia's rainfall pattern is influenced by a number of factors including the cyclonic winds the monsoon winds and also the ocean currents so now we can carry on with a discussion on the major climate and vegetation of asia by jumping into the tropical monsoon type of climate now the tropical monsoon type of climate is characterized by hot summers and cool dry winters and the regions that experiences tropical monsoon type of climate usually receive precipitation in the monsoon and summer months now we can see from the map the tropical monsoon type of climate is experienced in most parts of india and southeastern part of the continent of asia the tropical monsoon type of climate brings heavy rainfall in the southern parts of the continent and they are characterized by hot summers while cool and dry winters so from the map it is quite evident that the tropical monsoon type of climate mostly prevails over regions that include parts of pakistan india bangladesh myanmar southeastern china and also parts of japan so there they bring heavy rainfall during summer and monsoon months and they also give them hot summer and cool dry winters now such a climate is also characterized by tropical deciduous forest and the trees of these tropical deciduous forest shed their leaves during long dry winter season to conserve water and moisture so the tropical monsoon type of climate usually gives rise to or is characterized by tropical deciduous forest trees of which shed their leaves during long dry winters some important trees as part of tropical deciduous forest are sal teak and sandalwood now these trees also have a high commercial value because they provide us with important forest products now besides that the tropical monsoon climate also have some quite interesting wildlife so the regions that experience tropical monsoon climate have elephants tigers rhinoceros asiatic lion monkeys and also snakes 
so these are most commonly found animals in regions experiencing tropical monsoon climate the tropical evergreen forests are characterized by high temperatures and abundant amount of rainfall throughout the year. The trees here, as you can see, are evergreen and they are beautiful. Now, such tropical evergreen forests can be found in regions experiencing another major climate type that prevails in the continent of Asia. And here we are referring to the equatorial type of climate. Now the equatorial type of climate as you can see in the map is mostly prevalent in areas including the Indonesian and Philippine archipelagos and also parts of India and Sri Lanka. So these areas are places that have a huge influence of the equatorial type of climate and also are places where we could find those beautiful evergreen forests. So the equatorial type of climate is characterized by evergreen forest as I mentioned a while ago and they do not shed the leaves in any one particular time of the year. So the tall trees of the evergreen forest form a canopy of leaves that is they form like a shelter and there are places or the earth of these evergreen forests are believed to not even receive the direct rays of the sun. This is how dense and evergreen the forest of the equatorial type regions are. Now the tropical evergreen forests have unique flora and fauna with thousands of species some of which can only be found in these forests. Now the trees of these evergreen forests are hardwood trees. So hardwood trees like rosewood, ebony and mahogany. So we have pictures of all of these beautiful hardwood trees that are part of the evergreen forest and these trees are found in the equatorial regions as they are influenced by the equatorial type of climate and they are valuable for making furniture. So these hardwood trees are commercially valuable and they also help in enhancing the beauty of these evergreen forests. These evergreen forests are known to be characterized by high temperatures and abundant amount of rainfall. They are believed to cover 6% of the earth's land and are home to 50% of the animals that live on the earth. So they actually are home to unique and diversified flora and fauna. The trees here, as I mentioned ago, provide us with hardwood trees that are commercially very valuable. They also increase the beauty of these evergreen forests and a lot of which are also used for medicinal purposes. So these definitely are one of its kind. Unfortunately, due to human greed and overuse and along with continuous deforestation, we are losing on this natural gift. So we need to be careful and find better alternative to conserve these evergreen forests. In this lesson, we were able to understand two other major climate types of Asia and we also understood their respective vegetation and wildlife. We understood that Asia's rainfall pattern is influenced by a number of factors like cyclonic winds, monsoon winds and also ocean currents. We further understood that the equatorial region has evergreen forests that are very important not only for the regions on which they exist but also for people across the globe. So here we were able to conclude our discussion on the major climate types of Asia and their corresponding vegetation and wildlife. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.